Hey guys, recently somebody in a comment asked me to do a video about virtualizing Windows XP. So I thought I'd just do a quick video showing how that works and what it looks like, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're into that, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. So of course, Windows XP has been um, not supported for, for a few years now. And uh, so of course, that also means that there won't be any updates or anything like that. So there will be certain bits of functionality that probably won't work the way we want to, um, or, or some websites, if we get online, may just completely reject the, the connection because of a super old browser. So uh, there will be some limitations as far as what you can do here. But overall, uh, it's a pretty simple process and we'll go ahead and just jump right into that. The first thing I should mention though is uh, while you still can download uh, uh, an ISO of Windows XP to virtualize, um, that, that's not a big deal. You can get that straight from Microsoft. But of course, you will need a CD key in order to uh, get through the installation process. Um, if you have one, great. If not, uh, you're on your own. I'm not going to provide um, any links on how to get those um, just because there may be uh, something called piracy Arr. involved. So uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're not going to share any of those links, anything like that. If you've got a key, great. Um, follow along. If not, follow along anyway, but at your own discretion. Okay, so here we are on my desktop as per usual. Uh, we've got Virtual Box Manager open. Uh, you can actually see that I've got uh, Windows XP in here already. Uh, I wanted to make sure that things were going to work before I actually started making this video. So um, what we're gonna do obviously is click new, uh, just like we always do. And I'm gonna title this uh, Windows XP um, and then we'll do uh, screencast. Uh, now I've got a 64-bit version, so I'm going to come down here and select the 64-bit version of Windows XP there, and I'll click Next. Now, Windows XP only requires 512 megs of RAM, but come on, why would we limit it to that? So uh, we'll go ahead and give it 400 or, or, or four, four gigabytes there, and we'll click Next. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this process of creating the virtual hard disk now. Uh, there's no point in trying to do that later, um, and we'll click Create. Uh, of course, we're going to use the VirtualBox disk image. I, it just makes more sense to use their native, uh, their native file type. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Um, if you watch my other videos, you know that I like to use the dynamically allocated uh, file systems versus the uh, the fixed size. Um, if you want to know more about that, go watch some of my other videos. I, I explain that a little bit there. Um, so we'll go ahead and click Next again. And <clears throat> this is where um, we're going to run into uh, where we'll actually want to make a change. Um, by default, this is going to store um, this this file or, or the the files for this um, for this virtual box on my C drive, and I don't want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually uh, click the little icon over here to choose a new location, um, and and then what I'll do is I'll go down to um, to my mass storage drive, and I'll scroll down to my virtual box. Uh, folder here, and like I said uh, earlier, you can see that I've got a Windows XP uh, thing there, but I'm going to create a new one. Windows XP screencast, <clears throat> and then we'll just go ahead and open that and click save. And I always like to go above and beyond when it comes to hard drive space when I can. So I'll go ahead and give it 50 gigs and click create. Um, next thing, of course, we'll have to go into settings and make some changes here. Um, all of the, the general tab should be just fine. Nothing to worry about there. Under system, again, we've given it four gigs of RAM, but we will want to up the processor if you can. Um, I like to at least give it two um, on any of the installs that I do just because. Um, and the acceleration, if you run into any issues here uh, while you're going through this install process, uh, like I've said in several other videos, there's a good chance you don't have virtualization enabled on your on your motherboard's BIOS. Uh, I did a whole video about that. Uh, I'll link to that below as well. Um, make sure that you've got that enabled. If you run into any errors, that's probably the first thing you should go check. Um, next is going to be our display. Uh, I always jack that up to 128 megs because I can. Um, then, of course, storage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just add a new uh, a new disk here. Uh, we will want to make sure that it's on the IDE controller. Um, if you've got a, um, a oh what the heck is a SATA controller in here, it won't work. Um, so go ahead and just create a, a, a new device here. Choose a disk, and then uh, you can go ahead and find your ISO for Windows XP. Um, then we can go down to audio. This shall be fine. Network again shall be fine. Uh, basically everything moving forward should be fine. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then we'll just go ahead and start it. We'll do a normal start. 
And if everything went well, we should uh, pretty quickly get into um, our installation process. All right, so uh, if you ever installed Windows XP back in the day, this is, should be a fairly familiar process. If not, it's a lot of just clicking next. So uh, like it says here at the very beginning, to uh, set up Windows Now, press enter. So we'll do that. Um, you can re read the UELA or the, the user and license agreement if you want. Um, at this point, it doesn't necessarily apply um, because again, this hasn't been supported for years now. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and press F8 on our keyboard because we agree. Um, we've only got one. Uh, one unpartitioned space to work with. Um, so that's fine. We can go ahead and press enter right there. And of course, now it's going to start going through um, the install process a little further. Uh, we're just going to use a, a quick NTSF uh, file format. Uh, the full, the, the second option is unnecessary at this point because it's a brand new virtual hard disk and there's literally nothing on it. So we'll just do a quick format. And now it's going to go through the formatting process. This should be relatively quick because we're dealing everything uh, with everything being virtual versus a physical, uh, like spinning hard disk like we had to deal with back in the day. So now, of course, it wants to reboot since it's loaded the files that it needs into into the disk. So we can just go ahead and press enter to reboot now. Go ahead and let this just do its thing moving forward. Um, it's going to reboot several times during this process, um, and it will always ask if we want to uh, press any key to boot from the CD. Um, the answer to that at this point is no. Um, basically, everything it's going to do, um, it's going to do, and we don't have to worry too much about uh, removing or adding any of those drives just yet. Now, of course, here, like it all, it's always said, uh, you know, this process will take approximately 37 minutes. I can promise you with newer hardware, that is not the case. Okay, so now it's gonna ask us where we are, that sort of thing. Um, all of this, if you're in North America, should be default. Uh, so again, a lot of clicking next. <clears throat> Name, uh, we'll just call it DB Tech. You can call it whatever you'd like. You can put in an organization here if you'd like. Uh, not really necessary though. Um, again, we'll click next. Now, here's where the license key comes in. Um, you can find these online. Again, I'm not gonna link to any. Okay, so now we can give it a computer name. I'm just gonna call it uh, Screencast, because I can. And I'm not even gonna put an administrator password on here this time. <clears throat> so now it's asking if all of my time is correct, and it is, but uh, I'm in mountain time, so that's fine. And we'll click Next. And then it'll go through some more setup process here. Um, and, and really, again, it's a lot of clicking next. Not gonna put it on a domain. Um, so now it's gonna copy some files. And you can just kind of see these minutes just fall off as it's calculating this, this as it's going. Cool, so another reboot, and of course it's gonna ask if I wanna boot from the CD, and the answer to that is no. And as per usual, the first boot does take longer because it's gotta do stuff like apply settings. And there is Windows XP desktop. So, um, of course, antivirus not installed. This is all pretty common stuff. There shouldn't be any antivirus installed because, well, it's the first boot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close all of that. Yeah, 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 all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and go full screen here. And of course, now we're stuck with this little 640 by 480 thing going on here. So, of course, what we wanna do is go to devices and insert the guest edition CD image. And we'll go ahead and click next through this to get the best compatibility possible. And we'll give it just a second here. Do I wanna install this? Yes, I do. Uh, continue anyway, continue anyway. Yes, continue anyway. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and manually reboot later. Um, so, Cause what I wanna do here is actually uh, do a manual shutdown here. And I'm just gonna turn it off. <clears throat> and we'll give this just a second here. Um, and I'm gonna go back into settings um, on our, our virtual machine here. I'm gonna go into storage. I actually just wanna remove um, this ISO that we installed from. Um, otherwise, it's going to continue to ask us if we want to uh, boot from that. I, I don't want to deal with that anymore. So go ahead and restart it. And just like 
just like that, that guest, is, guest edition's uh, CD image that we installed. Uh, let us go full screen here like we were hoping. Um, again, if you wanted to, you could do like a, a right control F and click switch. And then we go into full screen mode um, so we don't have the, the pesky Windows 10 thing going on um, in, in the bottom of our screen there. There we go. Um, and that's fine. So <clears throat> um, next, let's go up to devices. Nope, I lied. Um, so let's just take a quick look around here. Um, so of course we've got our old school uh, start button and start system here that was at the time was great. Now comparatively, I think it's garbage, but we had to evolve from somewhere here. So we go into my computer. Um, I wonder if yeah, I can just eject that from there. Um, but we've got we've got our old school file explorer here with our C drive and about 46 gigs. It takes th like less than four gigs to install this entire operating system, which I think is great because um, you can't really do that much anymore with the Windows and Mac OSs. So, um, so yeah, no, everything everything is working just like it should. We can actually come down here and do a task manager and take a look here. Like if we go to processes. Uh, performance, uh, 152 megs, uh, right out, right out of the gate here. Of course, we gave, gave it a couple of cores. Um, so everything here appears to be working. The other thing I wanted to do is right click and go to properties, so we can take a look here. Uh, AMD uh, FX8358 core processor. Of course, we've only given it two of those cores. Uh, we're running at four gigs uh, on that processing core, or those cores rather, and four gigs of RAM on uh, Windows XP uh, with Service Pack 1. Um, so there's that. Of course, we can go into up updates, um, click apply. I don't know if it's actually going to run any updates at all ever. Um, but of course, now let's see if we can get onto the internet. Uh, yep. Uh, over a secure connection, that's great. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and let's also remember here, uh, we are on, I think, IE6. Um, may take it a second to think. Oh, about IE version 6. Okay, so let's see. Uh, obviously, Microsoft didn't load. Google, uh, nope. Let's try techreviews.com Well, kind of. <laughs> it it kind of loaded, but not not very well at all. Um yeah, so no, nothing on here is loading. Again, we're dealing with a super, super old browser, and I'll be damned if I'm going to optimize uh, my website for IE6. So um, so there you go. Uh, we can actually still do stuff like, uh, if we do a run and a command, we can, uh, we can ping google.com, which tells us we can actually connect to it. Um, but again, it's rejecting the connection because we're using IE6. Um, and most of our websites out there are going to do that as they should. Okay, guys, there you go. Pretty simple process. Takes a few minutes, but not bad when you compare it to how long it used to take back in the day with uh, like CD drives. We didn't even have USB thumb drives to, to install from at that point. Uh, I don't even think BIOS accepted, or like BIOSes back then would do it. Um, and of course we had our, our 54, maybe 7200 RPM uh, physical spinning hard drives back then. So um, back when this was, was new, which was like, to like 2003-ish, um, it took a while. Now we can just do it in a couple of minutes um, and kind of reminisce a little bit about uh, these older operating systems. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. It really would help me out a bunch. And if you like just, just strange, weird videos like this of, of em emulating operating systems, whether it's Linux or like I've done in the past, uh, you know, like Windows uh, 98. That was actually my first emulation video, I think. Uh, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel. I do this stuff periodically, as well as other uh, software software related videos and at the occasional product review, that sort of thing. Um, so it'd be really cool if you'd subscribe. I'd love to have you um, as as uh, as one of my viewers. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Thanks a ton for your time and your support, and I'll talk to you in the next one.